So I've been building a series of backlit frames for some meteorite slices. And I've been thinking about new types of frames. Now normally I build a frame that looks like this. This is the latest SQL, which I've displayed already. But you backlight it, and they're relatively simple. You put a uh, you put a rock on a black piece of felt or some kind of backing and you cut a hole and you shine some light through it and you got a very nice frame. However, I've been wondering about slices kind of like this. This is a new one I just got, Mars bit. But to display something in a frame like this is a little different. There's no f crystals, there's no nothing. So I've been toying around with different ideas on how to light this thing up in a frame. So I'm kind of thinking outside the box here, maybe inside the box. I got myself another of my standard type frames. It's a basically a shadow box. It's got a nice deep inside. If I take the back off and pull all the pieces out, I've already taken the glass out of here since I'm not going to use the glass at all. But it's got a nice deep interior. Oops. I've got a nice deep interior that I can use to put some kind of LEDs along the edge here. It'll be hidden by this lip right here. And further, it's got this Reese, this kind of insert I can put in there. And what that gives me is something like this. Now, I've I've done some other parts on this one, but I can recess this. This is another large slice I've been playing with. But I can put the lights back behind here somehow. So I've just been wondering how that's going to work. So in the next week or two, I'm going to be experimenting with different ways of putting this together. And just see what I can come up with. I want to light this up from the front. So maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I don't know. So we're going to find out. So stay tuned. So the first thing I want to do is figure a way to put LEDs on the inside of each edge of this frame. This is the insert that came out of the thing. So what I did previously, I bought a box of white LEDs from Amazon. Uh, they're inexpensive and you get a, just a ton of LEDs. Um, they come in a roll like this. And each one of those little yellow dots on there is a separate LED, and they're very bright. They work off 12 volts DC. The back is self-adhesive. You just peel it off and stick like any piece of tape. So that's going to be the first step. See what happens. Okay, I've cut four strips of LEDs from that roll, and I've connected a strip on each side of the insert of the frame. Now the next step is I have to solder the electrical connections to each corner. So down here, you can see there's two little solder tabs, one there and one there, and on the joining corner, one there and one there. So I need to run a little piece of wire from here to here, and there to there, on all four corners to connect the electricity. So uh, on to the soldering. So this afternoon, I spent some time with my solder pencil, and I connected two little wires uh, to connect each of those strips. Uh, one wire is for plus 12, the other side is for the ground. And further, I put on this little uh, little clamp that I kind of jury-rigged, just pieces I found in my garage, um, to keep the wires from moving. It's a strain relief. These little connect connections are very tiny, uh, so any movement can rip the, the LED strip off of the frame. So this is stabilizes everything because they still have to do some uh, manipulation with this to get through the rest of the frame, put a connector on, etc. Um, so that gives me time now. Let's see if this thing works. All right, so we've got little wires here. This is my battery pack that I've ginned up. It's 9 volts. So there's the negative. Here's the positive. And there we go. We have a fully functioning circuit now. So on to the next step. Okay, I did a little bit more work on the electrical connections. I put a connector on there, 3.5 millimeters circular. And I've encased the wires in heat shrink just to keep them in one place. It's a little neater. Um, I found that when I put this insert into the frame, if I look at the front, there's not much of a lip to hide the LEDs. 
So what I'm going to do, I took another frame, it's exactly the same, second piece, and I put a little bit of a flange around the edge with just some uh, little molding. So that when I put the, the, front, the uh, spacer in there, I look at it from the front, it hides the LEDs very nicely. However, one thing I found is that because this wire comes straight up from the back, normally it would go out the bottom, I had to kind of make allowances for that. So I took all the pieces that are going to back this up, and I cut notches, you can see there. So the first piece is a piece of felt, it's felt covered cardboard actually, it's photo matting. And that goes in there, then that's going to be backed up by a piece of Lexan for stability. And then the thing that holds everything together, the back piece, goes in and everything works very nicely. You know, what I'll do is I'll bend this over, I'll cut a groove right here so that the wire can bend down and have a, a nice easy act, um, exit from the frame. So the next step is how we're going to attach the, um, the meteorite slice because I'm not going to use mechanical hardware this time. We're going to use some magnets. The next step in the process is attaching the meteorite slice to the frame. So what I've chosen to do this time is a little more experimental. I've never done this before. So we're going to use some neodymium magnets. These are 18 pound pull force each. I bought a set of six. So I wasn't really sure where I was going to start. But these things are monsters. To pull them apart, there we go. You see, slide them off. They come, they're about the size of a, oh, half dollar, I guess. They have an adhesive backing, which is separate. I've already applied these. You peel these off and you put them on your frame, and then that attaches to the. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> if they go together too hard, they will snap because they're very brittle. So let's see what happens with these. Next up, the process. I laid out the magnets in the approximate shape of the slice using the uh, adhesive stickers that are on the magnets themselves. So we we'll have to check this for how much hold it has. This is, this is something new and oh, there's a good amount of hold and you have to need to make sure that it holds its own weight. It's a really heavy slice and it's got good hold. It doesn't slide. Shaking it doesn't make it slide. So let's increase the air gap with a piece of backing, about sixteenth of an inch. The air gap decreases the magnetic hold. The wider the air gap is, of course, the less the hold. Um, okay, here's the piece together with the backing. Still got a good amount of adhes adhesion. So let's put this into the frame and see what happens. Okay, we have the light bar in there. We're going to light it up and check out the results. I haven't seen this yet. This is the first time. Okay, there it's in there, and the piece by itself looks pretty good in the frame. I like these frames. Um, okay, let's turn the light on and see what happens. Okay, big reveal. Uh, looks a little washed out to me. I'm not real happy with the results. Oh, uh, that's a bummer, but you know, this is an experiment, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I have to think about this one. Um, not really sure where I'm going to go with this. This is a view of the unlit frame. Looks pretty good. I'm probably going to go this way. This is a view of the lit up frame and it looks very washed out to me. So I think we're going to just go with the unlit version. So this was an experimental procedure and unfortunately not all experiments are successful. So I learned a few things and uh, it was still a good experience. So with that, I'll say goodbye for the day. Bye.